live from the YouTubes. First time we've done that in a while. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. We're back from vacation. All right. It is so good to be back, to be um, home in the normal set with you guys. First live stream in a while. We haven't done one in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Maybe it's been even longer than that. But my goodness, I am so excited for today's live stream. Happy to be home. Just got home this morning. Uh, and man, oh man, does it feel good. So uh, I just wanted to do a little bit of a celebratory live stream. Talk to you guys today. If you have any questions for me, anything been on your mind as of late when it comes to movies, and we're just going to go through, take about an hour, uh, and just talk our way through some films, some TV shows, and um, one of these fun live streams that I just love doing. Now, time, it's it's been complicated lately. A lot happening okay in the personal life but i, I want to definitely get back to these hopefully on a weekly basis uh if not then maybe every two weeks regardless i need to know how are you guys doing today i see everybody in the chat already uh and it's so nice to have all of you all uh and i appreciate yeah it was kind of a last second live stream so apologies for not letting you guys know but i was like you know what we're not doing anything we're home i could be sleeping probably should be sleeping i'm kind of tired uh but i figured we would do this for about an hour so uh we're gonna talk today and all of those wonderful things. And uh, thank you guys for all of your support while I've been gone on all of those videos. Um, had to talk a bit quiet because the family was trying to enjoy, enjoy the trip. And I was in the background recording my videos. But it was still fun nonetheless. So as always, if you guys are here and you want to drop a like down below. That tells me you like these live streams. Uh, and it also uh, helps the video. It pushes it on an analytics level. So I appreciate that. And all of the videos that you guys have supported over the last couple of weeks. But also if you want to ask questions today and assure that I see them, the Super Chat route is the best way uh, for all of your support on this channel. I appreciate that, and I appreciate all of y'all's patience while I've been away. Uh, Cash says, how's your vacation going? It went very well. I got to go uh, on vacation with my parents, and my brother wife couldn't go. Uh, she had to work, but she was very uh, comforting while I was gone, saying all's good on my end, taking care of uh, my boy buddy my sweet 11 year old dog. So she was great. I'm great. It's so nice to be back. We have Aaron in the chat, catching up on one of these lives. Netflix is killing it with brand new cherry flavor. Oh, Aaron, you know what? I saw your thoughts. I need to get back with you on that, but uh, I'm so glad you liked it. It definitely felt like your cup of tea and brand new cherry flavor was a fun one that I had an episode left going on vacation, finished it, recorded my thoughts. So that review is on the channel. Really, really good and interesting show. Uh, Andy says, yeah, still waiting on that dance and song review. Andy, that's coming. As well as everyone who is here from Patreon, just now I'm going to update you guys on uh, part two of our live stream. We're going to do that this week now that I am back. And I'm also trying to work on something this week. I, I got, and I told you guys this on Twitter, I got accepted to TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm working on the possibility of traveling this week. There's one thing I've got to do. It's passport. Don't have one of those, but I'm working on getting a, a pass card uh, and hopefully getting it in time to go. But uh, that's going to be my big project this week. So we'll see how that goes. But we do have our first super chat of the day from Procrastinator saying, yeah, about to see Suicide Squad for the third time. I'm not even joking. It may be in my top 10 of all time. Oh my goodness. I love that Procrastinators. Film Perfection Gun is a new favorite. Yeah, I've already watched it twice. I watched it again on vacation. I have to log it on Letterboxd again. Um, well, I know. You know what? I've seen it three times now because I watched it in preparation for my spoiler review. Oh my goodness. I'm behind on Letterboxd. I love the movie. I, I think it's spectacular. You guys know my thoughts. Procrastinators, thank you for the super chat. And uh, man, what a, what a fun film. The Suicide Squad is. Uh, glad to have you back. What did you think of brand new cherry flavor? Cam on camera. Well, the review is on the channel, uh, but I can tell you it is wild, but really interesting. Kind of like a modern David Lynch type TV show slash movie. It's strange, but I was so intrigued throughout the entire show. Uh, uh, Film Geek says the set is back. Are you excited for the Jason Momoa Netflix movie coming out Friday? I am. I, I'm excited for it. Um, it looks interesting. I'm a little hesitant because, you know, sometimes Netflix great projects, other times not so great projects, but I'm definitely excited for it. And, and of course, I'll have a review for you guys as soon as that embargo lifts. But um, holding out hope that it could be pretty good. And Michael, what's going on, Michael? Um, what is your uh, interpretation for the end? Oh, thanks for the super chat, by the way. Uh, the ending of the Green Knight. Oh, Michael, that's a good question. Well, I, I can't, I don't want to talk about that specifically here because some people may not have seen the Green Knight just yet. Uh, but that's definitely something we can discuss on Patreon, Michael. 
maybe we can do um just a random live live stream where we're not talking specifics and uh if you ask me that question at that point people are just gonna have to leave but uh, i'll tell you one thing michael i love the ending i know it's very um, a bit of a you know back and forth on if the movie's good or not. I know a lot of critics enjoyed it. Some of the audience members didn't. That's expected. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I thought the ending was an interesting wrap-up. Uh, definitely one that, you know, makes it all, some people say, well, it makes it all kind of pointless to watch, but I disagree. I think it's the other way around. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely one that is up for interpretation, Michael. Uh, and just so you guys know, if you're here, you just joined and you missed the beginning, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can today. But I appreciate you guys and uh, for all of your likes, for supporting this video, all of my videos while I was gone on vacation. Thank you so much. Joey says, Beckett was decent. I loved how it didn't feel Hollywood at all. Yeah, Joey, that's uh, part of one of my praises for it is it did feel like a throwback action film, like a thriller uh, that you don't get very often anymore. So that was definitely a positive. Have you been able to watch Respect? Excellent performance from Forrest Whitaker. Donald, I haven't watched Respect yet. I had to choose between that and Don't Breathe because, of course, I was uh, away with the family and I chose Don't Breathe. Uh, but I definitely want to see Respect. I'm probably more excited for respect, but I figured don't breathe too. More people were interested in that review. Aaron at the movie says, Hey Austin, love your channel, your favorite film of the year so far. And the answer, Aaron, uh, and you can of course find this on letterbox, but I'll go ahead and tell you it is the suicide squad. That is my favorite movie of the year. I thought it was absolutely excellent and so much fun. Um, but I'm going to keep updating that list. And then right before December hits, going to take it down so I can work on my top 10 movies of the year. Uh, thoughts on Dune. I hope I get to see it. I hope I get to travel to Toronto, my friend, uh, but we will see. Uh, Mr. J says, do you support, that was terrible. Uh, do you support the release, the air cut? Sure. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not ex super excited for it. You know, I, I think it could be different. No, it's definitely going to be better than the other cut. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, if they want to release it, release it. You know, I, I, I'm very content with the Suicide Squad, the the Suicide Squad that we got this year. But if they want to release it, I'll definitely be here for it. And I'll definitely be here to review it. So, yeah, um, you know, it's one that I'm not as excited about as something like the Snyder Cut, uh, because, you know, obviously that was a complete massacre. But maybe the Suicide Squad, I got to stop saying that, maybe Suicide Squad was a complete massacre as well. But you never know until you actually see the new cut of the movie. So I'm I'm not indifferent. I, I'm definitely interested to see it, uh, but I'm not out there, you know, you know, petitioning and all of that stuff. It's sure. I, I hope he gets to show his movie because I think that's really important when you're a director. And I understand why Ayer wants to show his version of the film, um, because as someone who feels very strongly about the content that I create. Yeah, I want you guys to see what I envision my content to be so I can understand. I can get behind a director's mentality like that. Um, who is your favorite Spider-Man? You know, I, I say this all the time. It's so difficult. It's so difficult because I think Tom Holland is the best and most accurate Spider-Man that we know from the comics. I think Tobey Maguire has the most nostalgia for me, and it's the one that I hold really close to my heart. And I think Andrew Garfield is the best actor of the three. So my least favorite is probably Garfield Spider-Man, but he's the best actor. So I think all three are phenomenal spider Spider-Man, James Spider-Man, and I don't, I you know... If I had to choose, sure, but I, I I think they're all three great, and I love the fact that I love all three, so that's the way we go. Also, don't forget Jake Johnson, and don't forget uh, Shamik's Miles Morales, so great great versions as well. Um, I plan to watch Cobra Kai for the first time uh, for the newest season later this year. Which of the Karate Kids films should I watch for the show? I, you know, I, I would have said the first, but we start getting into some sequel territory. I, I say just go through it. I say just go through it. That way you're, you know, you're more invested in the characters. You're more appreciative of what the story is providing us. They're starting to hit on more things as we go through the show. And uh, it's such a good show. You're going to love it. And let's try. We have somebody asking the same question over and over. Let's try not to do that, guys, just so other people can ask questions. But um, in terms of Cobra Kai, yeah, I say go for it. I say go watch as much as you can. Uh, so there you go. And I, I'm so pumped for the newest season. Let's see. Uh, congrats on being accepted to TIFF. You may see the last night in Soho and Dune. I believe Soho is going to be digital. Gosh, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. So I'm seeing that regardless, but Dune, it all comes down to if I can go or not. And we just don't know. So we will have to see. Uh, Clayton says, what's your favorite uh, movie that stars a musician? Ooh, movie that stars a musician. That's a great question, Clayton. 
Oh, man. I mean, that's something I definitely have to think about. Um, you could go Labyrinth. You could go trying to think, uh, hey, how about Begin Again with Adam Levine? Adam Levine, right? Yeah, Adam Levine. Begin Again has Adam Levine. I love that movie. I think that movie is so fantastic. Um, I love the newest, The Star, A Star is Born with Lady Gaga. Uh, so those are just some of the first ones that come to mind, but I'm sure there's one that's like, hey, this guy was in 1917 or something like that. Uh, but those are kind of the ones that come to mind. Let's see here. I uh, can't wait for Michael Keaton to be in the Flash. Ooh, I can't wait. I'm so excited for Michael Keaton to be in the Flash. Alex says there's literally no buzz on reminiscence with uh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I've heard nothing about that movie. Unfortunately, nothing. Um, but I am getting to see a movie. Now, as you guys know, I live in Kentucky. So I, I get to see some movies early. But oftentimes, my nearest screening. I got lucky with Suicide Squad. I went to some random place in Ohio that showed Suicide Squad as a fan, not even as a critic, uh, because my closest critic spots were like St. Louis and Atlanta. So I, I just, my nearest critics hub, I'm giving you guys some insight, is not showing a lot of movies right now. So sometimes I get lucky with early screeners. What I am getting lucky on is Candyman. And I know I get to see that. I'm very excited about Candyman. Won't get to see Reminiscence early, uh, but I will get to see Candyman. So we're just going to have to see how the movies over the next couple of weeks, because I'm iffy about a lot of them. I think Reminiscence could be good. I think The Night House could be okay. Uh, but Candyman's the one I'm really excited about. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Speaking of screeners, Dylan says, uh, how do you get screeners and send stuff to review? I have 5K followers on TikTok and people with lower me are getting sent stuff and getting to go to screeners. Well, Dylan, I don't know if studios are looking at TikTok in the same way that they are looking at YouTube. I don't know because I don't have a TikTok uh, yet. Maybe I'll make one eventually. Um, but I, I, Dylan, I, I just, you know, I can't answer that in its entirety because I just know the YouTube space. And I know that in the YouTube space, you have to at least have a couple thousand. But on TikTok, the people you may be seeing either have a blog or a website or maybe a YouTube channel. That's probably how they're getting it because I just don't know if studios are looking at TikTok the same way. But again, I'm not in the know, so I'm not entirely sure how that works, Dylan. But hey, maybe I'll get TikTok soon uh, and hopefully. But uh, but yeah, Dylan, if you if you have something, some sort of outlet like uh, where you write or uh, you know a website, I think that's probably the best way to go about it right now. But uh, you know. And I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know, but I'm of the firm belief that, you know, if people have an audience, then I think studios should take those people seriously. And of course, they have to be good at what they do. And Dylan, I'm sure you have 5K. I'm sure you're good at what you do. Um, so yeah, I, I think studios should um, should start taking that a bit more seriously. They did YouTube. They did YouTube. It took a while, but they did. Um, so you never know. Uh, good question, Dylan. Are you uh, going to watch the upcoming remake? He's all that. Yes. 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 Yes, I'm going to watch it. We'll see. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know how to feel about that. Good question, but I don't know how to feel about that. I saw Quiet Place Part 2, and I liked it, uh, but I wasn't crazy about it. That's okay, Stranger Boy. I saw some people that um, aren't crazy about it as well, uh, but I loved it. I thought it was excellent. Uh, Adrian says, Moon Knight leak thoughts. I think it looks I think it looks cool. You know, it's not the most comic accurate suit I've seen, right? And I'm still not entirely sure because we saw this with Shocker from Spider-Man uh, Far From Home or maybe it was Homecoming a couple of years ago. It's like, oh, this is the Shocker. And it's, it was a very similar looking image, except the guy kind of looked a little bit. And everybody was like, yeah, but it wasn't the Shocker. It was some fake picture. So you never know. But if this is truly Moon Knight, I'm OK with it, especially if the cape is CGI and that's what it's looking like it's going to be. So I got to see the cape, though. Cape is very important. Uh, let's see. AJ says, Hi, Austin. Have Friday Night Trio of Blue Steel. Oh, interesting. Road to Perdition. Oh, I love that. And the TV show Peaky Blinders. I'll let you guess which one was my favorite. It's hard not to go with Road to Perdition. But if you watch Peaky Blinders, got to go down to Peaky Blinders. I, I, I got to go with Peaky Blinders. That's such a great show that not a lot of people talk, to, talk about. And my wife recently dropped it. And let me tell you, she loves that show. Absolutely loves it. So I'm going to go with Peaky Blinders, AJ. Uh, Andy says, I'm down for a random stream on Patreon. Oh, yes. I want to talk about that review of my workplace. Andy, that was so funny. Oh, my God. I wish you guys could. That was so funny. And I'm debating on whether Free Guy is my new favorite movie of the year. Oh, Andy. Yeah, I saw your love for it, Andy. I saw your love for it. And listen, it's a it's a fun, fun movie. 
for me, it was lacking a little bit, making it one of my favorite movies of the year, but I thought it was really, really fun. And I'm uber excited for a sequel if we get one. Uh, but Andy, that, that picture you sent me was absolutely hilarious. I was cracking up in the car ride on the way home yesterday. <laughs> Aaron says, uh, drop a stream lab. So Aaron, Thank you so much for letting me know, my friend. Let's go on over to stream. Actually, you know what, Aaron? Let me let me knock some of these super chats out of the way really quick so I don't lose them. Um, Vanya says, "Hi, Vanya. Nice to nice to see. You. It's been a while. Um, let's see. Congrats on 95k. You planning to review Bad Batch? Possibly once it's over, if I can catch up. That's the goal here. I actually have an episode left of White Lotus before tonight's finale, and I might give you guys a review tomorrow morning for the White Lotus. I don't know yet. We're gonna see what the rest of the day holds." Either way, I'm going to finish it, so it'll be on my list at the end of the year. Uh, hey, we, hey, hold on. We got not the expert, okay? This 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 guy is one of my favorites on YouTube. Hilarious content, incredible content. So good at what you do. What's up, King? Uh, is there a movie, a TV show that surprised you this year? Uh, there's one called... Well, actually, there's a couple. Uh, you know what? The biggest surprise for me is actually my favorite show of the year. It's Invincible. I didn't know what Invincible would be. Uh, the one I was going to say is Katla on Netflix. It's kind of in the vein of dark. It's about a volcano that uh, people start to come out of. It's very interesting and dark. Uh, but the other one is Invincible because I didn't know it was going to be on the level of the boys. I thought it was going to be more like your standard animated cartoon slash superhero show. And it was that at first, and it slowly got better and more. I've talked about it a thousand times, but I've got to go Invincible. Uh, man, I've, I've got to go invincible. That is the biggest surprise for me. Maybe of anything all year. Absolutely incredible. We got fashionable changeling, uh, in the chat. Have you seen Heather's? It's one of my favorite eighties movies with a musical adaptation that is even better. Yes, I have. And it's been a while since I've seen Heather's. So I may not even have it on letterbox, but I really, really love it. I do. I think it's great. So, uh, yeah, that's one that I would love to go back. There's a lot of movies that I would love to go back and revisit. Uh, but that's definitely one. That's one of my mom's favorite movies. I think it's one of my mom's favorite movies. Um, uh, Mike said, come on over to the ATL. Do yeah, I would love to, and uh, we're going to be in Kentucky for the next couple of years, but maybe eventually I, I can get closer to the action. Uh, the mythical bro says, what was the first movie you got to watch early? My first in-person. Well, so the first one ever was the, the Joker, right? Was that before far from home? I think it was before far from home. Either way, it was Far From Home and then The Joker. Yeah, I think Far From Home was actually first. Uh, but The Joker. But The Joker was my first critic screening, and I went with 3C Films. Uh, 3C invited me over to Texas, and I got to go with him to that. That was super fun. But as a critic, it was 1917. I went and watched 1917 uh, about a month and a half early, and that has nothing to do with why it's one of my favorite movies of all time. That's the quality of the movie. But it was such a phenomenal experience, and that was the first one. And then uh, digitally, what was my first digital one? I can't remember. It was it was obviously a Netflix film, uh, but I didn't start getting early screenings until last year, late 2019. Um, yeah, it took me a while. It took me a while. And, you know, it's just one of those things you got to work. Y'all, I had like I had like 30K and I still wasn't getting early screenings. But that was back when not really anyone was getting them unless you had super high numbers. Uh, and now a lot of people get them. And I rightfully so. I think there's a lot of people that deserve to get them. So I'm glad they've kind of changed the way that they accept uh, uh, people getting early screeners. Um, grow with the flow. I like that. How much do you make as an independent creative? I, I can't I can't answer that. Um, my wife kill me if I answered that. Um, it's it's challenging sometimes. I, I mean, obviously, it's good enough to sustain, um, which is nice. And, and it's good enough to you know, continue. But at the same time, it's, it's almost like I'm in sales. So month to month, I never know how much I'm going to make. A and there is a baseline that I'm content with, but obviously, you know, you're always striving to do better. You don't want to be content. You want to keep getting, um, you know, to that point. And I feel like even once I get to that point, I'll want to, you know, get even higher. Uh, and it's not for me. It's because I have a wife and, and a dog, uh, but eventually I'll have kids. So I, I you know, I want to start a college fund, all that stuff. I'll say enough enough but again you're in sales basically uh, you're relying on i'm relying on you guys to support my videos and that's why i'm able to do this full time is cuz i have you guys um so where i am I, it, it's definitely something that i'm i'm very blessed to have but you know again i i definitely i want to get to that tier up so i feel more more comfortable 
uh, on a monthly basis. I'm, I'm very, I've been overly stressed lately about all kinds of things, uh, but I do it to myself. It's no one's fault. Uh, I do it to myself, but that's just because that's the way my mind has always worked, man. And I'm sure some of you guys are the same ways, As, especially if you are content creators, movie lovers, you just have that mentality. That's the mentality that I've always uh, uh, lived with. And it's a blessing and a curse, but at the same time, uh, I love it because it always kind of pushes me to work harder. And, um, it, you know, if I didn't have it, I probably would sleep in every day to 12. Um, but I try not to do that. I try to wake up and if I don't have anything to do, I try to watch a movie. Hey, that's just you know, the more you watch the, the, the better you are at discerning your own opinion. That's the way I've always, uh, had James talk movie says, hi, Austin. Hello, James. How are you doing? Uh, any updates on building your movie theater? Hey, like, have you made any more progress? OP, a little bit more, a little bit more. And, I, and I'll tell you one thing. I want to give a shout out to uh, a, a guy by the name of Jacob, uh, Jacob, who works at the local movie theater. He saw my video and he actually brought me over some uh, movie posters for my, uh, my, my movie theater room. A lot of movie posters. So I'm able to deck out this room with movie posters along with all the things that I've been working on. So I, I'm in the process of buying frames for a couple of those posters. We're going to switch them in and out. Uh, a lot of really nice ones, though. Uh, we got a Wonder Woman 1984. We got a Promising Young Woman. We've got a lot of the Oscar films from last year. I got The Father, which is awesome. Uh, this Cinemark exclusive poster, which is freaking beautiful. Um, so I was able to get some cool things. So that's kind of where I am now. Uh, but I've also still got to finish painting. <laughs> Guys, I, I get so lazy when it comes to painting. I hate painting. Uh, let's see. Poker Paparazzi says, you have great charisma. Uh, have you considered doing voiceover work and or something uh, in the movie show industries? Of course. Yeah, I would love to do voiceover work. I used to do voiceover work in college for all of our news shows. I would do the voice to commercial. I would do the voice to um, transitioning in and out of our shows. It was super fun. And I did the shows, too. I directed our... Um, College show called the Sean Wood Show. It was uh, where we talked with our basketball team, basketball coach. And then because I, I love sports, I'm in love with sports. Uh, but then I also did our news show. I was a reporter and then I was the anchor. It was cool. It was fun. And a talk show, man, I did a lot. And now I'm here and I'm using all of my poor skills to talk to you guys. <laughs> no, I love what I do. Uh, the Mythical Bros, this. Uh, and Aaron, I'm going to get to your uh, stream lives here in just a second. Thoughts on the iCarly reboot so far? I'll be honest with you. I've only watched five episodes, but I do like it. I do like it. I'm keeping up with, if you guys don't have The Real James on YouTube, The Real James is covering every episode of iCarly, and he does such a good job. Um, so I'm keeping up with him on the episodes that I've watched, uh, but I've been seeing him post and post, and man, I got a lot to catch up on, y'all. But what I've seen, I've thoroughly enjoyed. Cam! Cam, uh, Cam on camera says, are you excited for Dear Evan Hansen? Yes. I think that movie will have potential to earn Ben Platt his Oscar. I saw the musical version with him. I am. I am. I cannot wait to see this movie early. I cannot wait to see this movie, um, you know, and, and hopefully embrace that nice sense of emotion that I saw in the trailer. It looks good. It looks really, really good. So, Cam, that's one that I've been looking forward to um, and definitely one of the film festivals that I'll, uh, I'm attending. Uh, hopefully a couple more than TIFF. Uh, TIFF. TIFF. Guys ever been to the TIFF Film Festival? Um, no, hopefully TIFF and then beyond that. Um, we'll see what other movies I get to, guys. I'm still holding out for Dune. Fingers crossed. Uh, Emily says, thanks for putting me on to American Animal. Yes, Emily. Uh, one of the better movies I've seen in a while. I love American Animals. I could rave. I could rave <laughs> about that so much. Um, so, so good. One of my favorite movies of that year, 2019, 2018, 2018. Uh, absolutely incredible. What's your position going into uh, Dune? Have you read the books or going in fresh? I'm halfway through the book. I've been halfway through the book and I still haven't got back onto it. Uh, we bought a house and it, it became very distracting, but I, gosh, guys, I want to finish. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but maybe that'll, you know, maybe that'll be Dune part one and then Dune part two. You never know. Uh, but what I have read, I've really appreciated. It's a lot. I mean, that book is that book is crazy, y'all. But it's really good. And being able to kind of discern a few things and, and, and put one and one together. I mean, it's so far it's adding up to be a cool experience. So I hope the movie captures that. I hope the movie captures that. 1917. Oh, my gosh. Or oh, No Country for All Men. I've got to go No Country, but you're talking two top 15 movies for me. Uh, or top 20 movies for me. So I've, I, I've, I love them both, but I've got to go no country, but that is like, that, that is such a hard question. 
That's such a hard question. Uh, let me make sure I didn't miss any of these super chats here, guys. Let me know if I miss any super chats. I just want to, I want to make sure I get you guys. Um, we've got Damon, and let's try not to spam the same question over and over, guys. I'm just now seeing this. I'm sorry if I'm behind. Um, hey, Austin, what's been your favorite characters in Marvel Phase Four releases so far? Uh, for me, oh yes. Well, I love anything. Uh, uh, Florence Pugh is incredible. Uh, but uh, John Walker was great too. <laughs> Man, you cracked me up. Uh, but uh, yeah, John Walker's great. By the way, my wife caught up on all of the Marvel projects. She was behind on all the shows. She caught up while I was on vacation. I knew she would get work done. Boom. She's she's great. She's great. And she was talking to me uh, the whole way uh, back from my parents' house to our house today about the show. So I was I was enjoying answering those questions. Um, I was a news reporter in college. Shout out to Radio Crow. That's cool, man. That that's awesome. That was a fun. Um, I was also on the radio as well. I, that was a very fun thing to do. That's why I would love to do voiceover at some point in my life. Travis says, "How do you go about writing letterbox reviews?" I'm trying to write more myself, so I would love some tips, Travis. You know what? It's it's hard sometimes because I get so behind. I do video reviews and then I gotta watch stuff, but I don't want to write my reviews while I'm watching something because I don't want to take away from that experience. So, I'll tell you this. I usually watch or I usually write letterbox reviews at my most zen moments in the day. So the moments when I sit down and I know I don't have anything to do for the next 10 to 15 minutes, that's when I pull letterboxed out and I usually have notes written down. So I'll take those notes and I'll just start kind of, uh, first of all, I'll calculate my score and I'll have that ready to go. But then I just kind of hash that out any point in the day when I get free time. And I'll tell you what, don't, if you don't have an OtterBox, don't put your phone in the shower, kids. I am weird, y'all, and I can't believe I'm telling you this. I will write letterbox reviews in the shower. Obviously, I won't put the phone in the water. That's step one, okay? You don't want a wet phone. But that's like my time when I just, I kind of just stand in the water. <laughs> Man, I was like, what are you doing in there? Writing a review, honey. I will write in the shower because that's just, that's a moment when nothing is happening. And when I'm writing a review, I've got to have my brain just clear which is why you'll see me get like 10 reviews behind on Letterboxd. So that's kind of the calmest moment of the day. And that's when I write my reviews. So, you know, I have to have a clear brain. I have to be able to focus. Uh, but that's kind of my, I don't know if that's, a, that's advice, but that's just kind of the best time. Uh, but I love doing it, man. This, sometimes it's so therapeutic, writing Letterboxd reviews. Excellent. Leon says, hey, Austin, after six months, I'm done with my top 100. Oh, my God goodness that is great would love to hear your quick thoughts sometime dane on letterbox well first of all you sent a super chat so this will be saved so thank you for sending that super chat second of all uh, be on the lookout for my comment a little bit later today i'm gonna we'll, i'm gonna get on it and make sure we got a good top 100 no i'm i'm excited i always love seeing people's favorite movies it's one of my favorite things to do so I'll definitely go check it out a little bit later today. Uh, are you watching any Rick and Morty season five? You're going to do a review after the season. Possibly I'm debating it. a couple episodes behind um, what I've seen so far. I've liked, but the, one of the episodes or maybe a couple of the episodes that I'm really behind on, I've heard iffy things about, I've heard it's gotten a little bit divisive, but I also heard great things about the most recent episode. So I just need to catch up. I think I'm on episode four five or six right now, uh, but I'll definitely catch up and obviously I'll love the show. So hopefully I'll bring you guys a review at the end of the season. Austin, did you see a trailer for Prisoners of the Ghost Land with Nick Cage? The movie looks bonkers. John, I saw Prisoners of the Ghost Land at Sundance and let me tell you, was it Sundance? I think it was Sundance. Uh, that movie is bonkers. It's the most insane, crazy, uh, revolution, just wild movie you're going to see all year. It wasn't great, but I liked it so much because it was so wild and it, it embraced Nicolas Cage. It really embraced Nicolas Cage. So, uh, yeah, that's a movie you don't want to miss. Even if you hate it, that's a movie you don't want to miss. So is the Suicide Squad one of your top uh, 10 favorite comic book movies? I am right there. I'm on the uh, on the edge of putting it in the top 10. It's definitely up there. It's definitely up there. But we will just have to see if it hits that top 10. It's right in contention with another film. Uh, but the fact that it's in the discussion is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, Felipe says, I think 1917 is good, but kind of overrated. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. You're not alone. Um, I know a lot of people, oh gosh, we got some people spamming the questions. I know a lot of people are um, on board with it being a little bit overrated. I absolutely love it. I think it's like the perfect war movie, but um, but yeah, not everyone is, is, is completely there on it. All right, guys, let's try not to uh, 
Let's try not to spam here. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I'm just now seeing this. Q Crew says, any chance movie theaters will be gone in 10 years? Wow, 10 years is a long time. As we can see, a lot has happened. Um, I don't think gone. I don't think gone, but I definitely think not as many. And I think it'll be more of a rarity for people to go because I think people are getting used to um, used to watching things digitally. And it's a shame, but at the same time, I don't blame a lot of people. Even I, when movie theaters started coming back, I was like, I was like, man, why can't I just watch it at home? And I'm like, wait a second. I love the theatrical experience. And then, you know, but yeah, I think it'll definitely be more of a rarity, but we just kind of have to see what happens. Thanks for the AMA today, Poker Paparazzi. Uh, welcome back to your studio. It is so nice to be home. Loved my vacation. It is so nice to be home. Lost in the real. Oh my goodness. Lost in the real. Um, I've been watching you a lot lately. Uh, great stuff. What is your favorite Nicolas Cage performance? Honestly, honestly, I'm a little crazy. I think it's pig. I think it's pig. It is so recent and I hate to say it like that. I know the guy is, and is an, he's an Oscar nominated actor. I think it's pig, man. I do. I, I absolutely loved his performance. Like I, I can get chills just thinking about his performance. It's so good. And Nicolas Cage is just on point, even though he is so subtle. It's just such a subtle, heartbreaking, just oh, role that you don't expect from a guy like Nicolas Cage. But I think that's what makes it. That's what makes it good. That's what makes it good. So right now I've got to go pig in terms of, you know, National Treasure and all those fun movies. Yeah, absolutely. Those are those are fun films. I I have a I have a love for the National Treasure movies. But I performance wise, strictly performance wise, I gotta go pig. I gotta go pig. So uh lost in the real great great question. Great question. Uh absolutely. Uh Mike says, Do you ever struggle internally um with how you rank highbrow versus lowbrow brow films? Absolutely. Do you feel like you have to separate them categorically? No, I don't. I, and I look at, you know, even going as, as detailed as score. Yeah, score in a film. When I'm calculating the score of a movie, I don't really look at if it's a blockbuster or if it's a movie made for kids or if it's a movie made for this or that. I just score it how I'm going to score it. So when I score something, and let me let me just, I know I told you guys I would make a video about this, but let me... um. Let me go into my notes here and just give you an idea. So I, I score zero through 10. I go acting, direction, story, pacing, visuals, target audience, resonate. And then beyond that, I just look at entertainment factor and how that's going to affect you on an emotional side of things. Um, that's why this that that portion weighs a bit heavier. So uh, because I think emotions towards a film, I think, is the most important thing, even beyond all of that other stuff. Like, you go watch a movie that's kind of poorly made, but if it hits you right here, to me, that's more important than any of that other stuff, okay? So, that's going to weigh a bit more. So, I look at that individually per film, and I don't really look at the type of movie. Um, I don't say, you know, I'm going to give the, the the kid's movie, uh, you know, a lower score because it's a kid. No, I, I, I score it how I see it. That's why the Mitchells versus the Machines, I gave an 86. That's why you know, uh, a movie that feels like it's going to be an Oscar caliber film. If it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit. So I'm going to score it a bit lower. So that's just kind of how I operate. But again, everybody's different, right? We're all going to score movies in different ways. And I think that's one of the beautiful, like I tweeted this out yesterday. I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about movies is we all score them differently. We all go about calculating them differently. Uh, like Jeremy Johns has his very distinct rating. Chris Stuckman had his very distinct rating. And we all do our own thing. My boy, 3C Films, he's very distinct with his rating, but I love that. I think that's so cool. So I think that's that's really important. Um, but again, if you want to do the one through 100, go for it. I, I think that's a cool way to do it, but that works for me. It's not going to work for everybody. It's not going to work for everybody. I, I, I acknowledge that. Orion says, let's get this stream to 100 likes. Thank you, Orion. I don't even know how many we're at right now. How many are we at? 74? Come on, guys. Let's do it. This is why I don't have any friends because I'm weird. Okay, let's keep, let's keep going. Keep it moving. Uh, Noah says, <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. I, I don't blame. Look, a lot of people don't like me. I don't blame them because I'm, I'm a weird dude. Um, Noah, hey, Austin, a couple of questions. Do you think, uh, well, ooh, we, got some, we got some football questions. What do you think of Dwayne Haskins so far? 
not too bad. He's been playing good in training camp, and he looks pretty good in the preseason, and he's finally got a good coaching staff. Not too bad. He's not the future, but he might be a good transition QB. Okay. Also, when is Tiff? Uh, Tiff is September 9th through the 18th, 19th, I believe, 8th through the 18th, 19th. Um, I would only be there for three or four days. Regardless, I'm doing it digital, so even if I don't get to go, I'm doing it digital. Much love to you, Madison, buddy. Thank you so much. Madison's taking a nap. Buddy is probably sleeping on a couch. Um, we're doing great, and uh, I appreciate it, Noah. I do. Uh, Damon says, what are your favorite movie genres? Um, I love a good thriller. Uh, obviously, I love superhero movies, clearly. Clearly, can you see? Um, I love superhero movies. Thriller, though, man. I, I love a good dramatic thriller. I love a good dramatic thriller. Something that's going to keep me on the edge of my seat, keep me on my toes. I'm also a big war movie buff. I love war movies. Love, love, love. Um, so kind of that side of things. But if you can surprise me with a great comedy, even a romantic comedy, which is not one of my favorite genres, but if you can surprise me with something like that, like The Big Sick, right? Then that's going to get me just as much as anything else. But definitely in the thriller territory. Uh, what do you think of Miss Marvel getting pushed to 2022? Nikita, thank you for the super chat. I expected, I, I kind of expected that to happen. I, you know, I, I figured Marvel would push a couple of projects. I mean, we're seeing movies getting moved like Venom. We're seeing other things getting moved, uh, but yeah, expected. Uh, regardless, I'm excited for it. I hope it's good. I think it's going to be good. We'll just have to see. Austin, uh, yeah, Austin. Nice name. I've had a couple of bad days and I need you to cheer me up. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, also, do you need, uh, do you think Castlevania on Netflix is the best video game adaptation of all time? What's well, a, it's a, it's a tough question. I'd have to think about it. It's definitely up there. Maybe I'm going to say maybe, you know, I'd have to think about all the video game project. I'm, I'm that kind of person, right? If somebody asked me a question, it's like, what all have I seen? Um, I'd have to think about all of them, but off the top of my head, Castlevania is at least top three, maybe top two. Um, I would have to think about it, though, but that's, Austin, you raise a good point. Castlevania may just be one of the best ones we've ever seen. We've ever seen. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got Director Swab. Hi. James Gunn's Pulp Fiction. Quentin Tarantino's The Suicide Squad. Oh, because it's Pulp Fiction. Even, mm, this, this is hard. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Quentin Tarantino's The Suicide Squad because I couldn't imagine any other director ever tackling Pulp Fiction. And I could The Suicide Squad. Um, and that would be really interesting to see, by the way. But yeah, that's tough. That's a good question. Fashionable well, changeling. It's a good question. Uh, let's see. I go after that gut feeling when I score, rate, rank a movie. Yeah, that's that's part of the reason why emotion weighs so heavily in my score. You gotta go with your gut sometimes, man. Gotta go. And, and to me, again, you're not wrong. Whatever you feel about a film, you're not wrong, right? It's always, I mean, there are certain things about movies where you can, you can feel a certain way. Um, but yeah, you got to go with that gut feeling. Sometimes you got to go with that gut feeling. Um, let's see. What is a terrible movie with a great trailer? Oh, that's a great question. I know a lot of people look at, um, you know, Man of Steel and say, well, it's a bad movie with a great trailer. I don't think Man of Steel is a bad movie. I think it's a great movie. What's a terrible movie with a great trailer? I'll tell you this. I, I don't think it's terrible. I didn't love Kong Skull Island. Oh, okay. Here's a perfect one. I do not like Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters. I thought the trailer was spectacular. Do you guys remember that first trailer for Godzilla, King of the Monsters? Just an awesome trailer. The music, the... -na -na -na. I, I just thought I was blown away by that trailer. Didn't like the movie. That's probably the best example, uh, but I'm sure there are better examples with actual terrible movies because that's just a movie I don't like very much. Um, let's see. What do you think about all the hate uh, the suicide, uh, with the Suicide Squad? And do you think we'll ever get the air cut? The hate with the Suicide Squad, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't know. I mean, I think it's just people trying to pick sides. Yeah, I don't get it. But in terms of uh, the air cut, yeah, I, I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board. You know, let's see it. Let's see if they're going to do it. I don't know if they're going to do it, but sure. If you have it, show it to me. I'm not crazy excited for it but yeah i i definitely be willing to uh, give it a shot because it's got to be better than the other version uh let's see um let's see um nikita says i asked if you think it is oh nikita i gotta we'll have to go back i'm gonna have to go back uh do you oh do you think miss marvel is getting pushed oh yeah yeah well i think it was 
confirm that it was, right? That's what I thought I heard. Or maybe that was a rumor. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I saw on Twitter in the last couple of days that Miss Marvel was getting pushed to 2022. Uh, maybe that was speculation because, again, I've been on vacation, so I haven't been paying attention. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, as far as I know, I, I think it's um, rumored to be getting pushed. So, yes, <laughs> that's my answer. Um, uh, we have, uh, have you seen the White Lotus? Uh, great super chat. Thank you, uh, by the way. I am almost caught up. I got an episode left. We got tonight's finale. If I can get that in the next couple of hours, then I'm going to be bringing you guys a review, a spoiler-free season review tomorrow. That is the goal. And uh, so far, I like the show. I think it's solid. It started out weird, <laughs> but on a note that had me intrigued. And I'm just like, okay. So, uh, yeah, let's see what this finale does tonight. And really the last new episode. Um, and Tini says, brand new cherry flavor is whack. I'll never look at the game. I mean, it's crazy. I like it because it's crazy. That's why I enjoyed it. But it is a crazy, crazy show. Uh, nothing else like it this year. Nothing else like it. Um, do you think we'll get to see Tom Hardy's Venom in the MCU cash? Great question. I know he's been trying to make that happen. I can't feel about it. I wasn't a big fan. Yeah, I didn't love the first movie. I'll, I'll openly admit that, but I think he does a good job with the character. So that's kind of my one thing I'm clinging on to. I'm like, yeah, sure, I didn't think the movie was great, but I think it could be interesting somehow integrating it. But I think it's going to be the other way, way around. I have a feeling that we are going to get Tom Holland somehow swinging into that universe, if it is indeed separated, as opposed to that. But then you've got the Daily Bugle... Uh, Easter eggs and nuggets in that trailer, making it feel like it's in Tobey Maguire's world. So then my, my brain goes crazy. I'm like, okay, so if they if they go and they get Toby uh, in the midst of Spider-Man 2, which is why Doc Ock is in Spider-Verse, then that means Toby's going to break that timeline and Spider-Man 3 is never going to exist, which means that Tom Hardy's Venom is now the Venom in that universe and he's actually the Venom in Tobey Maguire's universe and not Tom Holland's universe. And then my brain's just like... And, and, and then I get this comment. It's like the No Way Home trailer just came out, JK. And I get all freaked out because the second I see that, I'm like, I want to see the No Way Home trailer. <sighs> I'm very excited about that. Very excited about that. Um, so regardless, what was the question? Yeah, something about Venom in the <laughs> Y'all, Spider-Man is killing me. I just want to see something. I just want to see something. We know it's going crazy, but I want to see something. Um, Jonathan with the uh, Super Chat. The uh, Wow. Thank you, Jonathan, so much. I appreciate your support towards this channel. Uh, it really does mean a lot. So what are your thoughts on Scarlett Johansson suing Disney for breach of contract? I mean, it's it's a tough question because, again, I still don't know all of the different sides and the specifics and the details. I understand her anger towards the film going to Disney Plus and not getting that strict theatrical re release. But then again, we look at the circumstances and the pandemic and all of the things that kind of push them into that direction. So it's a very difficult tight rope to walk and I can see issues on both sides, but at the same time, it's really, really hard not to just look at where we are right now and just be like, things kind of had to change because of the pandemic, like in everyone's lives, not just their lives. So it, it's really hard to pick a side on that one. It is. And it and it sucks too because, you know, we love we love Black Widow. We do. And we love that relationship with Disney. And she had the, I think it was, what was it, the Twilight Zone uh, movie coming out and all of these, or the Tower of Terror movie coming out. And it's all just like, man, and now that relationship is ruined. And it sucks. It sucks as, as, as fans of both things as fans of Disney and as fans of Scarlett Johansson. It sucks to see that. Um, I, I hate it. But yeah, at the same time, and Mike says uh, at the same time, I don't think anything to do with COVID. Disney did it wrong by throwing that out there. It's about the contract and whether or not it'll be breached, period. Yeah, sure. It's about the contract. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But yeah, I just, I don't want to get into it anymore because it's just like, I don't want to deal with that drama. But, you know, I can, I can, understand her anger i can understand scarlett johansson's anger uh for sure but it's it's not something i like to speak on because frankly it's not really affecting me in any way uh it's just affecting the industry which sucks and i'm the same as you guys i'm i'm a fan of the industry i'm a fan of both things uh but it sucks it absolutely sucks so let's get into the next question by the way thank you for the super chat again jonathan that's uh, a good question uh movies with 
Cause says, uh, have you seen the leaked Moon Knight image? I have. Um, what Marvel shows uh, would you like to see? Lastly, where's building a cinema room part two? Well, movies with Cause, I have to keep building for there to be a part two. <laughs> I've been gone for a week uh, and all of those things. So eventually I, I will definitely get there, but got to save up that money to get to the more theater room. Um, but I, I definitely, uh, I definitely like the moon nine image. I think it's interesting. What Marvel shows would you like to see? I mean, it's a great question. There are a lot, <laughs> there are a lot of Marvel shows I would like to see, you know, give me some X-Men spinoffs. I think that's the next big thing. I think X-Men spinoffs are kind of the, the way to go. Um, cause you got all the ones that we've announced, but Cyclops. I mean, what, what's an interesting character? Storm? I think a Storm show would be freaking rad. I think that would be super interesting. Um, someone of that caliber that maybe, you know, would never get a movie because they wouldn't green light a movie with a Cyclops. Like, they'd never give us a Cyclops movie. Why would they do that? But I would love to see something along those lines, along the lines of that character. Um, so you never know. You never know what we're going to get on that side of things. Uh, recently started Dexter. Holy, what an awesome show. I love Dexter. I do. I'm very excited for it to come back, by the way. I think it's going to be extremely interesting. Uh, and the way that it ended, I'm like, how are they going to? Okay, we'll, we'll see what has to happen. But uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I do have Noah saying I missed his second super chat. So no, I can't bring that back on screen. But let me go see if I can. Uh, let me go see if I can grab that for you really quick, just in case. Noah said, Noah said, we know you're excited for Paw Patrol on Friday. Sorry, I missed that, Noah. I I, I really do. I, I wanted to get that on screen. Yeah, you know what? It's funny because I was I was on vacation with my 10-year-old um, cousin, and she loves Paw Patrol, and she was super excited. Uh, well, she kind of, she's like, I've grown out of it, but she loves those characters. So I'm like, you got to go see the Paw Patrol movie, girl. Uh, so I think she's, I think she can go see the Paw Patrol movie. Uh, but I, I don't know anything about it. So I can't, you know, I can't say I'm excited about Paw Patrol, but hey, one of these days, <laughs> maybe I'll see it. Maybe I'll see it. Um, what reviews are coming out next week? Honestly, I don't know entirely yet. I need to look because again, I've been away, but I'm gonna I'm gonna plan out my schedule. Hopefully, I have a poll for you guys on the community page tomorrow. Um, I love you. That's pretty good. That's good, Patrick. I love you. Um, Adrian says Gambit show with Rogue. Adrian, speak in my language. I would love to see that Gambit. Um, uh, yeah, get uh, get Taylor Kish back. No, uh, Channing Tatum, who was supposed to be Gambit. No, um, let's see. Uh, Nick says, like the new setup, keep up the great work. Um, oh, let me get, um, let me get, uh, really quick, Nick. Thank you for that, by the way. Oh, and I might be changing up some things because I did get some movie posters, like I mentioned earlier in today's live stream. So maybe you're going to see the side start to change. It might be a little more fancy chase. Uh, thank you for the super chat. If you meant to ask a question, I'll be on the lookout for it, uh, but I am going to keep this up on screen in the meantime and go on over to the other way to answer your all's questions. It is called Stream Labs. And I, Aaron, I believe, is the only one to leave me a Stream Lab so far. But we're going to share this screen regardless. And let's go ahead and refresh this page and bring up Aaron's question. So Aaron said, Oh, we got, oh, we got a couple stream. Look at the Stream Labs. We got three Stream Labs, y'all. Thanks for the thanks for the questions. All right. We got welcome back from VK, my friend. Uh, from Aaron or AA Ron24. My question is regarding my favorite film of 2021, which I have heard very few people uh mention. Oh, uh, yes, Little Fish. Yes. Um, uh, I really found this film moving and it's now on Hulu. Thoughts if you've seen it. Yeah, Aaron, it's not my favorite film of the year, but it's it's hovering around my top 10. Uh, it's right outside my top 10 and my top 15. I really, really liked Little Fish. I thought it was super interesting. It is in the midst of a pandemic, but at the same time, I think there is so much to take away and kind of chew on from the film. Two great performances, beautiful direction, amazing color correction. Um, Aaron, this is a great movie. And yeah, so apparently Little Fish is on Hulu right now. So that's a huge recommendation from both of us. Little Fish is right around my top uh, 15 of the year so far. And then we have two super chats from Michael. Michael says, I saw Annette on the same day as the Green Knight. Not a good idea. And it's as bonkers as people say. You're not ready for it. No one is. It's one of those films that will defy all ratings. Any rating makes sense. What other films come to mind that are like that? Um, I could go last year with, and I always forget that. Why did I forget the name? Uh, there was a movie that came out last year. I'll try to think of it, but 
I do want to say, I have seen Annette. <laughs> this movie is crazy. Oh, and the movie I'm thinking of is I'm Thinking of Ending Things. That's a movie that kind of defies all ratings. But Annette is crazy, guys. You are not ready for this movie. It is a fever dream if I've ever seen one. There's so much about this film that will just like pull you in so many different directions. And I'm still kind of conflicted on my rating because certain things were too much for me. I'm like, that's weird. Weird decision. But something about the artistic vision is intriguing me. So expect to review this week. But oh my goodness, this movie. <laughs> Gosh, this movie's crazy. And then Michael also asks, uh, I'm thinking about writing a screenplay play that's very personal called Circles in the same vein of the father. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Dealing with loneliness from my childhood to the present where the main characters notice a similar pattern all his life. That's beautiful. Uh, Michael, that sounds beautiful. That sounds absolutely beautiful. I would love to see that, Michael. Um, and if it's in the vein of The Father, let me tell you that The Father is one of the most impactful movies I've seen in a long time. Um, not just because I lost my grandmother, but because you're dealing with something that is very, very personal to a lot of people. So if it's in that vein, then I think it could work extremely well. So uh, yeah, Michael, I would love to see that. And of course, I have you on Patreon. So keep me updated on that. Uh, it sounds really, really emotional and very intense. So uh, that is awesome. Thank you guys so much there. There's a link in the description if you guys want to go the stream labs route. Otherwise, um, Super Chat is the other route to do it. So I appreciate the questions you all Let's get back to the normal chat. Um, we've got uh, Joey Singh uh, wondering if you like Shameless. I do. I'm not completely caught up, but uh, Shameless is such, so good, so entertaining. Uh, and my friends, I have two friends uh, that just got married, by the way. They are the biggest fans of Shameless, so we talk about it all the time whenever we hang out. Uh, Chase says, uh, do you want to go on and become a director? Or what would you do in filmmaking? I, You know, I would love to be a director, Chase, but honestly the most appealing thing for me. Uh, there's two things we talked about a little bit earlier, which director has always been the top notch, but there's like a lack of confidence in myself. I don't know if I would ever make it there. Um, I would love to do voiceover, which would be awesome. Cause I like to talk in weird voices. Uh, but I would also like to do, uh, I would also like to do cinematography. I'm a big cinematography fan. Being a director of photography would be interesting and it would be fun. And I would love it. Uh, and I did a couple uh, short films in college. I don't know where they are. I, I'm sure I could find them. Uh, but we never posted. We just submitted and 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 uh, actually won one of our festivals, which was cool. But I also um, I also did a lot for our shows within our studio that we had. So yeah, I think cinematography would be super interesting. So Stuckman, if you're hiring, show you what I got. <laughs> uh, one of these days, guys. One of these days. Let's see here. Do you think Free Guy will start a franchise? I do. I do. And I think it's uh, I think it's worthy of that because it's so much fun. Uh, when do you think Young Justice Season 4? I don't know, but I'm, I've been waiting on it for a long time, Titan Gamer. I'm waiting on it for a long time. I do love me some Young Justice. Canyon Taylor says, Conspiracy Theory. Squid <laughs> oh, my God. Canyon Taylor. I wish I would have read that before I put it on, on screen. But thanks nonetheless. Uh, let's see. We've got Noah with another super chat. Noah says, Do you know the movies... Do you know what movies will be digital for TIFF? I do not. How do we see those movies when it comes time? I will try to keep you guys updated. So if you don't have me on Twitter right now, it's at the Birkinator. T-H-E-B-U-R-K-3 instead of the E because I thought I was cool as a kid. N-A-T-O-R. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to update you guys when tickets for TIFF are available or when they will be available uh, because I would love nothing more than for you all to be tuning in with those uh, to those movies with me. I think that would be super cool. So if you're wanting to mo watch movies like The Last Night in Soho or some of these you know higher caliber films, I, I think that would be super cool. Uh, super cool. So keep me on Twitter. I'm going to try to update you guys, and as I go through the festival, I will be releasing my first thoughts and reactions on Twitter, and that's how you guys will uh, hopefully know. But you will know when I know. As soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. Um, let's see. Uh, will you be tuning in for the Game of Thrones prequel? I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. You know, I don't know if I'll be doing weekly recaps like I did Game of Thrones, but I'll definitely be tuning in and I'll definitely be reviewing it. So we'll just have to see. Oh, man, um, we got a good question here. I can't answer yet. I can't answer, Jacob. I think my theories may be spoilers for people who haven't seen the show. 
um, who's in the box. And this isn't a spoiler. This is in the first episode. It's literally the first shot of the first episode. But um, I can't say. I, I can't say. I will give you guys my theory in the video, what it was. And I promise I won't lie. After I see the finale, but uh, man, I got some, I got some theories. I got some theories. I kind of wish I would have done episode by episode of this, but it's okay. It's too late now. Uh, let's see. Let's do a, a couple more. Jasmine says, did you watch Titans yet? I did not Jasmine only because I've been so busy lately. Um, I would like to watch the, the, cause I've heard good things about the first couple of episodes. So uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll watch it and get caught up on it. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, Austin. What advice would you give someone about uh, uh, to get bigger on Letterboxd? Because I'm currently working on my YouTube, but I kind of feel like uh, no traction on Letterboxd. I'm not angry with no traction. But, you know, that's a that's a good... Honestly, OP, I, I didn't really do anything. I was just consistent. I think that's the most important thing, OP, is make sure your reviews are laid out in a way. And even if it's like one sentence, because I know a lot of people on Letterboxd that are super popular and they write one sentence. Most of them were already popular, but some people, if you write one sentence, make the sentence matter, make it funny, make it appealing, make it uh, thought provoking. But consistency is what I go for. And I get really behind on Letterboxd. I do. But I try to at least post one review a day, one review every two days or two reviews a day just to keep that. Because if you're consistent, more people will find your work and more people will follow you. So I think that's the best way to do it, uh, and that's my best advice, OP. But um, what is your – what's your letterbox? I'll go follow you. I'll give you a follow on there. Uh, let's see. And we have uh, a couple more here. Movie Lover, how many Criterions do you have? I don't have a lot. I probably have 18 to 22, something like that. I, I only get movies on Criterion that I feel are worth getting on Criterion, and and I hope to do a video, maybe even on Patreon one of these days, kind of going through uh, my very small collection. Uh, but my wife's like, you got to slow down on the movies because they're expensive. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. They are expensive. Um, we're stubborn. <laughs> let's see. Uh, we've got, uh, let's, do, let's do one or two more, guys. Let's do one or two more because we're about to that hour mark, and I'm supposed to mow the grass today, but it looks like it might be raining. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Uh, let's see. Thoughts on Succession Season 3. So excited for it. I'm pumped. Be, I, I am, I've I never been more pumped for a season of television. I love Succession. It's been so long. It got delayed. I was super excited for it. And man, this show is so good thus far. So if Season 3 is at least close to the quality of 1 and 2, I'm going to love it. And I can't wait for it. Uh, and barring any super chats, guys, let's do one more here. This is a good one to end on from Rabbit Gaming. Uh, Ribbit Gaming. Why did I say Rabbit Gaming? Yeah, Ribbit. Um, let's see. I'm going to say, uh, well, let me let me read it first. Do you think Shang-Chi will be a smash hit and surprise everybody? Or do you think it will be a flop? I think it could go either way, but I need your opinion on this. So I haven't really thought about it, Ribbit Gaming, but, Ribbit Gaming, but I will... I will say it will do solid numbers, but not great. I think it'll fall in line with Black Widow, which did solid numbers, but not great. Here's what I'm hoping for with Shang-Chi. I hope internationally it does really, really great because we still haven't seen a movie that has come out this year that has done super. I mean, people were giving Suicide Squad a hard time. Uh, I get why. Okay. It should have made more money, but you have the simultaneous release that people don't have to pay for. You have the fact that we're in the midst of a resurgence of the pandemic. You have all of these factors. It's an R-rated movie. A lot of people didn't like the first one. All this stuff. And everybody's just like, yeah, it's a flop at the box office. I'm like, yeah, it's not doing great. But what movie is doing great? Other than Fast 9 that did great overseas. But in the U.S. it did fine. And that's the thing. All these movies are doing fine. And, and you know, Suicide Squad, yeah, it is it is struggling really hard. But I, I want to see I want to see what those numbers are on streaming. That's what I want to see. I saw it was the second biggest release, uh, and and I was excited about it. And people were still like, ah, but Austin, humbug. And I'm just like, okay, okay. Somebody I think just a lot of people want this movie to fail. Uh, and it's not doing great at the box office. There's no denying that. But what is in the United States right now? That's kind of my thing. So hey. We'll have to see. Uh, Free Guy's doing solid. You know, not great numbers, but for what people expected, it's doing solid. So that's that's hopefully going to lead to more movies. I want another Suicide Squad. I want another Free Guy. I want all of these things. Um, 
but we got to get those numbers up and we got to see what the streaming numbers are. That's kind of where we are right now. So yeah. Um, what do you think of an AK TV over a 4k TV from Eagle Eye? I, I don't know as much about AK. I, I've never actually seen anything in 8K yet, so I can't say much. I love 4K TVs. I love them. So it's hard for me to go, but you can only go up from here, right? It's, it's hard to say that AK wouldn't be better than a 4K, but I don't know all the specs, so I can't really judge that. But I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm working on this, this movie theater room, what TV I'm going to buy. Um, I, I'm starting to veer into Sony territory. You guys stop me if that's a bad idea. They're expensive. The Sony televisions are great. They're great. So uh, Sony 4K is kind of what I'm looking at right now. I think I've ditched the projector idea just because the layout of the room is, is not right for a projector. But uh, but yeah, I might go Sony Sony television, uh, but very big. So tell me what you guys think of that. Uh, Mike says, oh, sh <laughs> says, oh, shucks, it's raining. But yeah, I guess you got to keep streaming. No, my wife would kill me if I went all day. She well, Actually, she wouldn't. She would probably love it. Um, but I've not seen her in a week. So I want to go hang out with her and annoy her. <laughs> this evening uh let's see yeah i heard the suicide squad was pulled from a lot of theaters yeah i mean again there's not a lot of movies are doing great and it's really sad to see it's it's really really unfortunate but come on guys let's go see these films free guys worth it suicide squad's worth it but again you got to be of age so don't be going and say, don't be going to that r-rated movie i never snuck in as a kid all right next super chat uh we <laughs> Do you think all of the big films uh, scheduled later this year will be pushed back to 2022? Dune, no time to die. Keep up the great work. Alex's movie corner. Maybe. Maybe. It's it's got me worried. I'm nervous. If no time to die gets pushed again, I'm just going to internally combust. I mean, that movie has been pushed so many times. So many times. I don't want to see it. It's possible we do see it. I don't think Dune's getting pushed at this point. Could be wrong, but we it's kind of a holdout game because what is September going to bring us? Are things going to get better or are they going to get worse? And if they get worse, I don't not see it moving. But Dune, please don't leave TIFF. There's a small sliver I get to see it. Don't leave TIFF, okay? <laughs> um, it, it's a possibility, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Austin, what's your opinion on the current state of the Flash show? I can't answer that only because I haven't watched it in like four seasons. I haven't watched it like four seasons, but uh, you will never, ever know. You will never, I, I, I will never, ever know because I don't know if I'm ever going to catch up on it. And that's, that seems mean to say, but there's so much that I'm behind on right now. I feel like when I get there, I'll be old. <laughs> um, I like the first couple of seasons, but I just kind of fell off and there's just a lot to watch right now. Uh, too much television, guys. Actually, there's never enough, but too much television. Did you see Stillwater? What did you think? I didn't see it yet, Cole, and I've still got to see it. It's one of those I had to push off because of vacation. Uh, Sony, oh, I'm getting some good feedback on Sony. Uh, LG is very good, too. Yes, I do have an LG, and I really like it. Um, do you make money from streams? I, I make uh, super chats, nothing beyond there. But um, uh, just so you guys know, um, YouTube takes most of my super chat. Not most of it, but a, a percentage that is larger than my liking of super chats. Uh, but your all support means the world to me. And any dime that I get, it goes back into this channel. So I just want to say thank you, especially these uh, these live streams. Um, Suicide Squad is great. Um, I assume you're talking about the new one. I, I agree. I thought it was awesome. Favorite way to watch a theater in IMAX? Damn, great question. So is it IMAX? Is it Dolby? Is it Cinemark? I'll tell you what. I, I do love Dolby, I've only watched one movie in, and I thought the sound was incredible. I didn't love the, the the screen that I watched, but it was a smaller Dolby Cinema, so I'm going to take that out of the equation. I've never seen a huge Dolby screen. So IMAX with a big screen and great sound system, Cinem uh, Cinemark XD with a big screen and great sound system. For me, IMAX, the visuals are better. For me, Cinemark XD, the audio is better. I love the sound system in my Cinemark XD. It is, I believe it is Dolby. Uh, is it Dolby? I think Cinemark XD is Dolby. Regardless, it is beautiful. The sound is incredible. Uh, and the IMAX sound is great too, but for me, it's the visuals. Everything's really crisp and the screen is so big and it's just beautiful. So, you know, it's like whichever one I get lucky on for whatever film I'm watching, I'm okay with it. Uh, but if it's opening weekend and it's a big film, I'm either going to do IMAX or I'm going to do Cinemark XD. That's the way it is, because those are the two for me. Um, I do not have an AMC close to me, though. My IMAX is Regal. My Cinemark is XD. The nearest AMC is three hours. 
So it's it's very unfortunate because I love AMC as well. Uh, let's do uh, let's do one more, guys. Let's do one more. My wife's like, "Hey, are you done?" I'm like, "Hey, sweetheart." Uh, <laughs> you guys have been great today, by the way. Kenya Tucker says you're gonna have another pool party. <laughs> you know what? Um, I I would like to, but it's raining. I would like to, but it's raining. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, it's a small kitty pool that we bought. So not an actual pool party. Uh, let me make sure I haven't missed any stream labs or uh, super chat questions here, guys. And uh, no, I think we're all caught up. So thank you guys for everything today. Seriously, for all the great questions, I tried to answer as many as I could. And again, as always, I'm not going to get to every one of them, but we're going to try to come back to doing these more regularly um, for your all support while I was on vacation. Oh, my God, it was incredible. It meant the world to me. It really did uh, because, you know, I'm there to enjoy myself. But at the same time, I want to keep pushing content out to you guys. And that's what I did. I uh, went and watched two movies, one by myself in uh, the, the midst of our vacation spot. Uh, but it was worth it because. I was able to, you know, get some content out to you guys and uh, still have that communication, which was super cool. Cash says, when's the next live stream? Going to try to do next week. Going to try to do next week. Um, um, we're we're going to push for next Sunday. So we'll just have to see. Uh, but you guys are the best. Lots of reviews this week. Again, if you left a thumbs up on this video, just know it helps so much. If you have supported any of my videos this week with a thumbs up, uh, just know that it means so much, uh, both analytically and this specific video that I do pushing that into the YouTube spaces uh, to where they start to push it to other people. Cause that's how these channels grow, man. And not just me. If you have a channel that you love on YouTube, um, the best way to support it is by liking it. That is the absolute best way because that's what YouTube looks at more than anything now, more than anything. So if you leave me one of these, I appreciate it. Uh, John says, go make uh, the wife happy. I'm probably going to annoy her, but <laughs> But uh, but thank you. Uh, Damon says, past 100 likes. Thank you so much. Uh, OP says, lever, letterbox. Oh, letterbox, letterbox, letterbox. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got to follow you on letterbox, my friend. Uh, thank you so much for leading, leaving that. Uh, just became, oh, but uh, what just became a pain? You know what that means? That means we got to get you on our live stream this week. It means we got to get you on live stream. Mow that yard, son. Yeah, I guess I got to mow the grass a little bit later. Um and Nelson says, you did so good while you are on vacation. You a king, bro. Thank you guys so, so much. Uh, Steven's just showing up. Howdy. Howdy, Steven. How you doing, my friend? Um, you guys the best. Thank you so much for watching. Going to go uh, unpack. I'm still not even unpacked. I did this live stream before I unpacked. Was that a good idea? I don't know. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Adrian. You're the best.